Hi there, everyone. Welcome to Advanced Pro University. Uh, as mentioned, today we're going to be talking about lot serial and batch tracking capabilities. So what we're going to be covering is we're going to be covering what are my tracking options and how, how can we track through Advanced Pro. Uh, why would I even want to be tracking my products and, and how to set up lot serial and batch tracking within Advanced Pro. We'll, we'll also talk about how to actually do the tracking and, and get the reporting at the end of the process. Now for manufacturing specifically, uh, please see our previous videos on manufacturing. Uh, it is a very similar process as you're checking the product uh, that you're going to be using in and checking out the, the finished product. Uh, that, that's one way that you can do it through manufacturing with our manufacturing module. But today we're mainly going to be focused on our receiving and our shipping capabilities. So <clears throat> let's start at the beginning, kind of high level. What are lot serial and batch numbers? And, and kind of to, to start off, we'll start off even higher. We'll start off with a SKU. And a SKU denotes a product type or a model number. Uh, you might know this is a part number. And this uh, SKU stands for a stock keeping unit. So this gets applied to all of your products in a particular model. So if you sell alarm clocks or engine parts, for example, the SKU identifies all of those items. Some people might also refer to this uh, as a part number, and you'll see that in QuickBooks. So next we will talk about lot numbers, and a lot number gets assigned to a group of products that were, for instance, manufactured on the same day. <coughs> Pardon me. So these are usually used for expiration and recall management. So you might have thousands of alarm clocks that you've produced overall, but only 500, for example, that go into the same lot. Now, a batch number is similar to a lot number. The difference is, in Advance Pro, the lot number refers to something whole that you use up as a whole unit, like an alarm clock, whereas the batch number refers to something that you might use up bit by bit, like a piece of raw steel or food by the pound. Another reason you might use batches in Advanced Pro is the ability to use custom fields. We do have custom field capabilities there. Now, the serial number is something you've probably heard of before, and that's one unique unit. It's your computer that's in front of you right now has a serial number uh, that you could go and look at, or a DVD player will have a serial number. So now we're talking about a specific alarm clock or engine part. So you can potentially have a SKU, a lot, and a serial being attract, uh, attached to any single item that you could track throughout its process. So what do we use these numbers for? Why track lot serial numbers? Well, you could use them for warranties to see how long it's been since you sold a product to a customer. You could use it for recalls to see if they were affected by a recall, either for a raw material that needs, uh, we need to go get those produced goods back, or maybe there's been a recall that you're issuing uh, or is being issued by one of your vendors on a particular product. So you want to know which customers got affected by that recall. Uh, the next one you might see is scheduled service times. This might be for assets that you're managing internally or might be for something that you've sold that you're, you're going to need to go and look at a year after you've sold it to provide some service to. And the last thing that you might be using this for is compliance. So looking at your food, or medical safety, uh, or just safety re re uh, regulations in general. And this is usually tied to not just tracking from the vendor through your warehouse and then out to the customer, but also tracking things like your expiration dates again. So let's now let's jump into Advanced Pro and let's discuss how we can uh, actually set this up for a product and what we can do in terms of using these tracking capabilities. So we're going to go to a specific set of products I've set up. I've set up two. One is called uh, batch product and the other is called lot and serial product. And the settings to enable these are essentially the same. First, you'll need to make sure that your lot and serial module is enabled in Advanced Pro. And if you don't have that, that's under admin and utilities. If you don't have these capabilities, you may need to have these enabled. Uh, go ahead and reach out to your Advanced Pro advisor or tech support for that. We'll be happy to help you. So once we've got the product that we want to enable, serial numbers on, we're going to go to uh, E for edit, we're under view products here, and we're going to go to serial numbers tab. And this is this works with the same whether it's a serial number, a lot number, or a batch, they're all going to be under the serial numbers tab. Serial and lot are here under this first sub tab, 
So you can see we've got the lot numbers that we've already got here. We can see what's already in our inventory. And uh, we can see the individual serial numbers attached to them. So these are all part of lot one, two, three, four. And then we have five units, unit zero, unit one, unit two, unit three, and unit four. Uh, now, if we wanted to add new serial numbers, we could go ahead and choose our warehouse. And if we have some more stock than we have serial numbers, you'll see this assigned serial number quantity. It's unassigned stock. We could click this LS button and we'll be able to add these items in. So uh, I will be showing this a little bit later on when we actually receive the product. Now for batches, we can come to this batch tab. And here we can go ahead and look at batches for a product. I'll move over to our, our batch product that we've set this up for. So here we can see that we've got one batch, one, two, three, four. It's got five units in it. They don't have serial numbers. We can see the picking location that's been put away in. We can see history on this batch. And we can see the expiration date. Something with batches that we've implemented is used more often for food. We also have this red, green, uh, red, green, and yellow um, notification system where it lies in relationship to its expiry date. So we have an expiration notice date, and you can give a default for this, like six months in advance, for example. So what this enables you to do is you can see when it's good, when it's getting close to the expiry date, and when it's actually expired. And you can always sort by any of these settings as well. So you can look at many, many batches all at once. Now, again, to add, you just choose your warehouse and click that LS button. You're going to see this LS icon quite a bit through this presentation. It denotes lot, serial, and batch. And that's going to be used throughout the tracking process. Now, if we want to create a setting for a product where we cannot bring it in, get rid of it, do anything without logging a serial or a batch number, we're going to come into settings. We're going to choose, we're going to check off serial or batch right here. And what that allows us to do is it forces us. We cannot receive product without putting, in this case, a batch number in for the product we're receiving. We can't do an, a positive or negative adjustment. And we can't ship product out unless we're assigning that batch number. So it forces anyone using your system to make sure that they're letting you know which serial lot or batch number was used. So now, uh, let's let's take a next step. We've talked about setting this up. And by the way, the general settings for this are under admin utilities here for lot and serial. And that, there's a lot of extra settings that we can enable. This just enables lot and serials. Here you can put in uh, whether or not you want to share them and, and how these should be allocated. And you can also configure the custom fields that are available for batch numbers as well. So now, if we come to uh, a vendor order, uh, all of our tracking as far as vendor orders and, and sales orders, those all happen here in the warehouse at the time of receiving or at the time of shipping. So we can come into our orders to receive and we can open up our most recent order uh, that we have right now. And here we, we can see that we're receiving some lot and serial product and some batch product. And we're actually receiving 100 units of each. So here I'm going to go ahead and I can put in my amounts that I'm receiving. Now, you could also use a scanner to bring these in. Uh, at the time when you're receiving, you have to identify which SKU you're receiving before you identify the batch, and that way we can know, uh, or the lot and serial, and that way we know that such a, a lot, or such a lot, or such a serial, or a, a, a batch is actually getting assigned to a specific SKU that you're using within your software, or within Advanced Pro. So here we've got uh, 100 pieces. We're going to go and click LS, and it's going to bring up our batch window since this is a batch required product. And we can have batch 5, 6, 7, 8, and there's 100 products. Now with batch, we could say it's um, any split, for example. So we could say it's uh, 50 and then make another one for the other 50. We could say it's even a fraction. We could say 75.5 and then 24.5 to, to balance it out. As long as we get to this 100, we can have it in as many batches as we like. And that goes for when we use it up as well. We can use up product across multiple batches if we need to. So all I did was I put in my batch number, I put in my quantity. If I need to, I can set my expiry, manufacturing, and expiration notice date. And I click Create Batch. Now you can also import lots, serial numbers, batches through an Excel file using this button. And uh, there are uh, files available on our knowledge base to help you bring those in. 
Now at this point we can verify and update the stock and that's going to finish this transaction as far as that item is concerned. You'll see now we have a red check mark over that LS button and that lets us know that we actually already have the lot or serial number in uh, it registered for this receive. Now we're going to come into the lot serial product. This is a little different so it'll bring up our lot serial entry window. Now we can just put in a lot and a quantity and hit create lot number only uh, and this expiry date down here and the manufacturing date that can be tied to our lot number that's lot only uh, and you can see if I were to do that uh, say we'll bring in all 100 what it's gonna do is it creates a line for each product so each of these lines will actually represent a single unit now we can also if I reset this we could do something else we could say uh, we could have a starting serial of 1, or uh, I'm going to actually start at 5 because we already have 0 through 5. I'm actually going to start at 6, there we go. And we're going to end at 106, and I could put in 100 units now, and it's going to number them off sequentially for me. Alternatively, we can use this manual serial number uh, setup, where we can go ahead and scan in the serial number, or we can import here from an Excel spreadsheet. And you can see we can also have, for each lot or serial, we can also track the individual dimensions uh, if we need to for any of these products. So here I'm just going to go ahead, I'm going to receive everything uh, with lots and serials, and we'll do the quantity of 100 there. So we'll go ahead and create that. So here we've got our lot and our serials created sequentially. Now, uh, if you're using AP Label, you could also uh, have labeled each of the products and then be scanning them in. Alternatively, you could enter the serial numbers that you want and use AP Label to print off the serials that you've created. So this is up to you. Uh, Advanced Pro can either supply the information to your labels or it can come from the labels that get generated automatically. That's up to you. We'll confirm this. So now the serials have been entered into the database successfully. And uh, I can just go ahead and hit receive, and that's going to finish this and actually confirm all of the data that we've entered. So that covers receiving some product, and I do have to put in a bill or a reference number there. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, we've covered getting the products in. Uh, at this point, I'm going to touch on manage inventory. So if we go into our manage inventory window and we look at our products, you'll see this LS button now. Uh, as soon as you have some products with lot and serials in Manage Inventory, you're going to see not just the picking location they're in and the stock levels uh, and the reserves against them, but you're also going to see this LS button. And if you click on that, that will take you directly to where you can view the lot, serial, or batch number information uh, in the product setup there. So that's from the Manage Inventory screen. Previously, we had gone through the View Product screen. There's two different ways to access that information. So this will only appear if you have lot and serial numbers in stock. Now, uh, as far as shipping the product out, uh, and, and you can also use lot and serial numbers when you transfer product as well, but as far as shipping product out, we're going to come into the warehouse again. We're going to go to orders to pick. So again, we have a customer order that's already been placed, just like we had a vendor order for receiving, and this is at the time of shipping. So we can casually go over, we can scan the product out that we're going to be shipping. I'm going to go ahead and open this up, get into the right transaction. There it is. Oh. Here's our transaction. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pick the two products that we have. And I can be sc scanning, particularly for serial numbers, you're going to see SN. We can go ahead and scan that serial number and it'll grab the appropriate product. product because our serial numbers do need to be unique for each product in stock. So I could go ahead and scan one of those serial numbers. I'm just going to go ahead and click my LS button. And again, we're going to assign product. So here uh, we've got some lot and serial numbers that we created earlier. I'm going to choose a particular one that's in stock and click apply. And we can see our expiration date as well if we're concerned about that. So that's for assigning a whole unit. There we go, serial number has been assigned and we can close. You'll see that red check mark again. And if we click that LS button once more for the batch product, this takes us to the batch screen. Now we've got one batch, but here's the thing about batches. We could actually say we're gonna grab half from this one and half from this second batch that we brought in later. And we could assign that 
and that works just fine. So that's going to keep the registration. You'll see it goes down to uh, 4.5 and 99.5 in this case. So now we've, we've changed what's available for those batches. So that's how that gets tracked in. So now we've got all this set up. I'm going to go ahead and mark this to ship now. I can put in all my other information. And when I submit, uh, those lot and serial numbers and those batch numbers are removed from our inventory. So that talks a little bit about how these can be tracked on their way out. So now, uh, next, let, we're going to talk a little bit about how you can track these lot and serial numbers at the end of the process. So you may have gone through manufacturing as well and track them uh, as, it, as you're going in and coming out. You're going to look for those LS icons throughout the software, whatever you want to deal with lot and serial numbers. Uh, we're going to come into reports now, and there's two reports I want to point out to you. One is a manufacturing report. It's called Track Built Serial Numbers. This actually takes you to a dynamic screen where you can see the serial and lot numbers produced and where you can see the work order that it's attached to. So this is attached to work order 19, and we can dynamically jump in to that work order. We can also see the bill of materials. Now the other report I want to show you is a product report. It's the lot and serial report, and there is a batch report option as well. So you can see, uh, again, we've got these tabs, serial number, batch number. So I'm going to work a serial number report, serial and lot report. This gives us a history of all of our serial or lot numbers, or we could search there uh, by a particular lot number or a serial number. So here we can see by SKU, it starts off with a particular SKU. Uh, that's the header right here. Then we can look at the lot number and the serial number, and we can learn everything about that particular product in its history. So we can see for this top one, uh, these items came in on vendor order 1037. They have not been sold on a customer order. They haven't been returned on a vendor return. They haven't been brought back from a customer on a customer return. Uh, and they haven't been involved in a work order or disassembly order. But if they had, we would see them listed here. So we can see every, every order as it relates to these particular lot numbers or serial numbers. And we'll also see the warehouse that they're currently in. Now, down at the bottom, we can see there are some that have been sold to a customer. And we see the customer that it's related to there. So we could then go alert that customer if these particular items did get recalled. Uh, if they get involved in manufacturing, either as a component or as a result, we'll see it as a work order. Now, you'll know if it's a raw component because it came in on a vendor order and it got associated to a work order. You'll know if it's a finished good because it won't have a vendor order number. It will just have the work order number attached to it. So that will give you an idea of, of how to track serial numbers within the software. And I do just want to touch on the batch version of this as well. So here we can take a look. Again, we can search by batch or in the previous screen, the, the lot or serial number. We can search by a particular product or SKU. And we can also look at what's happening with a particular warehouse or a particular customer if we want to see everything that a particular customer got. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring up our batch number report. So this shows us, you can see it actually the status if it went through uh, whether it's been shipped or it's been finalized as a work order, it tells us what's going on with these particular items. And it also tells us the customers again. Uh, we get the expiration dates. And here, here's the work order that this has been attached to. So you can see that this is actually a finished good because we don't have a vendor order. We just have a work order. Uh, and if we were to go find a component, we would find it the other way. We would see vendor order and a work order. That gives you an idea of, of how you can track your history of your serial numbers and lot numbers and batch numbers through Advanced Pro. Uh, this does conclude our tour today.